America, the land of the free and the home of the Braves. And of course, the Braves have to play somewhere, but is their field the largest in their state? The answer is no, it's not even the Falcons digs, and today we're going to critique the largest sports stadium in each state, even the ones the size of postage stamps, and that's coming up right after this. Before we get started, I have featured many of these stadiums in other videos, so if we are light on the secrets and hidden gems, just know you can tickle your stadium fetish with my other videos. Also, there's 51 of these. Yes, DC is included, so don't get mad when I keep it brief. Let's get into it. Ah, uh, the place where Alabama football issues beatdowns and where Brent Musburger loves to tell us we're looking live. And since 1998, Bryant Denny has undergone many expansions and enhancements that coincide with the team's success. The stadium splits time with Jordan Hare in hosting the Alabama High School Football Championships. While not our smallest entry on this list, it is the smallest indoor and it makes ironic sense that Alaska's largest stadium would house something they have in abundance, ice. The new scoreboard installed in 2014 came from the San Jose Cow Palace, if you ever wonder what they do with old scoreboards. The house that Jake built. It's Jake from State Farm. State Farm Stadium has been a trendsetter since it opened in 2006. The host of two Super Bowls and Denny Green's famous rant. If you want to crown them, then crown their ass. Both the roof and the field are retractable. Named for businessman Donald Reynolds, Arkansas's largest stadium serves as the home field for the Razorbacks. The stadium features a huge jumbotron called the pig screen so that fans can clearly watch the Razorbacks usher in the Chad Morris era with a 2-10 record. Twenty nineteen will be the last year for NFL football in the Coliseum, but the Trojans will continue to play in the recently renovated and expanded stadium. The Coliseum has hosted the Olympics, the World Cup, multiple Super Bowls, and the nineteen fifty nine World Series. It is set to house the Olympics again in twenty twenty eight. I've been through the desert on a horse with no name to find a stadium named after horses without a name. That made no sense, but you understood. Broncos Field has been open since 2001, and though it doesn't have the highest elevation in the country, that stadium is coming later, it does have the highest fans. Not much has changed about the Yale Bowl since it opened over 115 years ago, including the part about there not being any locker rooms. Those are located 200 yards away. Man, that would suck if you had explosive diarrhea during the third quarter. The stadium was the first to be shaped like a bowl. The site where Joe Flacco played out his college games Delaware's largest stadium is teetering on finding itself on one of my worst stadiums lists. As the centerpiece of a massive athletic complex in Newark, the arena has planned renovations underway. Since the Redskins, the Nationals, and the United have left, RFK has now become the largest rotting dump in D.C. Well, if you don't count Congress, hey yo! There may be plans to build a new stadium for the Skins on the site, but it's accessible by Metro, so Dan Snyder would probably build a toll gate at the top of the station. Are you surprised that the Swamp is the largest stadium in Florida? 
BHG got its nickname because it was literally built on marshland and recently it applied to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site because it's where Tim Tebow ascended directly into heaven. That's not true. From one underachieving SEC school's house to another one, Sanford actually tops Mercedes-Benz Arena for largest in Georgia. There is a mausoleum inside the stadium for all the Bulldog mascots. Poor little fellas, RIP. Though large in capacity, this stadium has suffered brutal punishment not only from low attendance figures, but from the elements themselves. The salt-laden air of the islands makes it steel rust and corrode much faster than in other environments, and the stadium has become a walking dead-like structure. The constant upkeep and repair is no match for the elements, and a new stadium may be needed soon. Home of the famous Blue Turf, which was introduced in 1986, that was all the vision of athletic director Gene Blaymeyer. It was a purely marketing move, and since then, other schools like Eastern Washington have followed suit. In 2011, the NFL banned any playing surface color other than green, nicknamed the Boise Rule, because we can't have that malarkey going on in Roger Goodell's league. I bet you are surprised that Soldier Field isn't on here, but it was the largest before they let a spaceship land on its old frame. While that was being done, Memorial hosted the Bears that year who went 4-12. It has since been renovated twice since 2008. Site of the 2019 NHL Winter Classic, Indiana's largest stadium is one of college football's oldest. There is, of course, touchdown Jesus, because large paintings overlooking a field of play definitely sway the outcomes of football games. Home of the pink locker room, where people can assume the space's gender, and the Children's Hospital Wave, Kinnick Stadium, is Iowa's largest. It is named for Niall Kinnick, who won the Heisman in 1939 and was killed in World War II. To date, he is the only Iowa player to win the award. Hey, the only thing the Wildcats have over the Jayhawks, a larger stadium. Of course, the place is named for Coach Bill Snyder, who led the team from 1989 to 2005, then again from 2009 to 2018. The West Side Stadium Center was built in 2013 and features a statue of, guess who, Bill Snyder. The site of the Bluegrass Miracle and former home of the hefty lefty Jared Lorenzen, Kroger Field is usually where the better SEC teams bag an extra win. Cincinnati-based Kroger bought the naming rights in 2017, the first SEC school to pimp out their stadium for money. The SEC's third largest stadium, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, is one of the few arenas with dormitories built right into the freaking stadium. Tiger Stadium also served as the site for the Saints to play their home games after Hurricane Katrina. They went 0-4 there. Boy, Maine is really bringing it with this one, as apparently Harold Afon named this stadium and a lot of other things in Maine. He made his money selling shoes. Maybe not the smallest stadium on our list, but I'm not going to say the prettiest, that's for sure. Yet another Redskins facility, they lead this list in stadiums and crappy owners. Once known as Jack Kent Cook in the town of Rao John, all of that ended when Snyder purchased the team in 1999, ushering in, well, the Dan Snyder era.
I guess owning an entire town really comes in handy, and ever since he built Gillette Stadium outside of Boston, Robert Kraft has enjoyed remarkable success both on and off the field. Well, except for with the revolution and in visiting massage parlors. Better known as the Big House, Michigan Stadium is the largest capacity in America and the second largest in the world. The biggest reported crowd here was in 2013 when Michigan played Notre Dame with 115,109 people showing up to see the Wolverines win. I wonder what the exact count was when this play happened. Whoa, he has trouble with the snap! Built on the former side of the Metrodome, which all they had to do was deflate and fold up into a storage bin, U.S. Bank is one of the NFL's newest and most tricked out stadiums in the league. It's already hosted a Super Bowl, seen a miracle, and packed in 140K fans to see Garth Brooks. It also looks like a giant snapping turtle. Way up in North Mississippi is the home field of the Ole Miss Rebels. The stadium is named for longtime coach Johnny Vaught and former professor Judge William Hemingway. Considerable upgrades have been performed over the years, including a new scoreboard. However, the main seating bowl still features bench style bleachers. Did you know that they once considered putting a fabric dome on Arrowhead, but the project was quickly scrapped once they realized how stupid that would be? The oval-shaped scoreboard was installed in 1991, and the shrine to Patrick Mahomes is currently being erected. One of the best small stadiums in the country, Washington Grizzly is not only well built, but it is situated at the base of a mountain and provides fans with spectacular views. Lights were not added until 2012. I mean, who wouldn't want to stare at that mountain during the daytime? If you've ever been to Lincoln, it's pretty hard to miss Memorial Stadium as College Football Saturday fills this arena with a sea of red, just like it fills the town's skyline. When the stadium is full, only Lincoln and Omaha have larger populations for Nebraskan cities than the stadium itself, which is obvious again if you've ever been to Nebraska. I got a lot of votes for this one as one of college football's worst stadiums, but it will soon be usurped in capacity by Las Vegas Stadium when that opens in 2020. The Rebels will be grateful to move in there, though I wonder if the Monster Jam World Finals will stay at Sam Boyd. It was proposed that the Raiders would play in the aging stadium before leaving Oakland, but like, no. Our oldest stadium on this list certainly looks it as the site for the Dartmouth football program has been active for over 125 years. The actual memorial is one of the few that is for soldiers that died from World War I. The capacity was taken down from 22,000 to 11,000 when in 2006 it was determined that not many people need to see Ivy League football. The site of two competing tire fire franchises, MetLife was once the largest capacity stadium in the NFL. However, it seems the place is now leading the league in bad personnel moves. The stadium has hosted a Super Bowl, WrestleMania, and various soccer games. Another from my worst list, Dream Style Stadium looks about as inviting as a free dinner at a prison cafeteria. Apparently, major touring acts agree as the last big name concert to happen at the stadium was the Rolling Stones in 1997.
Surprisingly, New York's largest stadium is not located in New York City. We had to go upstate to New Era Field, where the Rowdy Builds fans get to freeze for their love of football and alcohol. It used to be called Rich Stadium, which was one of the first naming rights deals ever, and then was called Ralph Wilson. Allegedly, the place is cursed because it's built next to a family cemetery, which like kinda makes sense. Once known as Carolina Stadium and then Erickson Stadium, Bank of America is now named after high interest rates and unnecessary fees. The exterior has been compared to both Soldier Field and the LA Coliseum. The sight of some dominant football and sometimes basketball taking in a game at the Fargo Dome is probably the best thing you can do in North Dakota, if not the only thing. A surprising number of big music acts have played the Dome, including Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars, ACDC, and Justin Bieber, just to name a few. Not to be outdone by their conference rivals, the Horseshoe is the largest stadium in all of Ohio. The original capacity was 66,000 from 1922 to 1943, but has steadily grown into a dick measuring contest with Michigan, and it now tops over 100K. Not sure if there is a tattoo parlor on site. You knew I had to throw shade. Though Google Earth does not show it, the south end of Gaylord Family Stadium was completely enclosed in 2017, adding nearly 4,000 additional seats and ending the disjointed look that you see here. The stadium is informally known as the Palace on the Prairie. Absolutely one of the most gorgeous stadiums in all of college football, Autzen is the finest facility public funds can buy. The Oregon Ducks have a variety of tradition including a motorcycle, playing the same highlight, a weather forecast, and of course, thotties on the sidelines. Another Big Ten school slapping down their stadium capacity on the table, Beaver Stadium is the second largest on our list. It's sometimes called the Erector Set or the Beave, though I've never heard either of those. Within the student section is the S Zone, where fans show their support by taking a giant S into the stands. Home of the Ivy League Brown Bears, this stadium certainly is interesting. Up until 1978, they used wooden bleachers and they didn't get lights until 2010. I was very disappointed to learn that during halftime, actual brown bears are not unleashed in the stadium where they could potentially maul people. That would make the place more interesting. Better known as Death Valley, Memorial is rife with traditions such as running down the hill, Howard's Rock, and Dabo Swinney never turning down an opportunity to get in front of a camera. The name Death Valley is partly from a cemetery located on a nearby hill and you know, Death Valley. See, graveyards aren't always a curse, Buffalo. So new it's not even rendered by Google Earth, Dana J. Dykhouse is named after a former U.S. Bank CEO. It was built right on top of the old Coughlin Alumni Stadium and is a significant upgrade. The second largest in the SEC, Neyland, has steadily seen many upgrades to the area surrounding the field and many downgrades to the product on it. In 2010, seats and amenities were added, and in 2018, Greg Schiano was deleted.
The SEC's largest stadium, Kyle Field, has been the Aggies' home since 1927. Quick fact, the 1919 Aggies went 10-0 and didn't give up a single point all year. Yeah, that happened. Home of the 12th man, the stadium received significant upgrades in the last decade with a new facade and a secret entrance to bring Johnny Manziel his cash. Home of the Cougars, no, not the milfy kind, Lavelle Edwards is located amidst the mountains in Provo, Utah. It is named for the longtime BYU coach. Jurassic fossils used to be stored underneath the east bleachers, but those were moved in 2005. Vermont gets the prize for not only having the smallest stadium, but it's also a freaking baseball field, a double whammy. The reason it's a baseball field is because the Catamounts don't even have a football team. Apparently, it's a great place to watch a game. Sure it is. Enter Sandman, Virginia's largest stadium has been in use for over 50 years. On scoring plays, the Hokey Bird mascot does bench presses while the students toss a girl into the air, a cannon fires, and if it's a night game, fireworks are going off while cadets do push-ups and a march plays with flags or something. Wow, that's a lot going on. Located right on Lake Washington, Husky Stadium features large covered seating areas because it, like, rains a lot in Seattle. According to Wikipedia, the stadium once reached 133.6 decibels, the highest ever recorded for a college game. I'd probably enjoy listening to that more than ever hearing Jake Paul's Everyday Bro. Where the country road leads, West Virginia's biggest stadium. John Denver actually made a surprise visit to the arena in 1980 and sang Take Me Home during the dedication ceremony. The song has been played at every home game since 1972, unlike another copycat in the NHL. Located just south of the actual Green Bay, the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field has served as the Packers' home for over 70 years. It has received significant upgrades, with more seats being added in 2013 to take it above Camp Randall at the University of Wisconsin in capacity. Lambeau is the oldest continually used stadium in the NFL. And now for our last largest stadium in the United States states. Do you know which one we haven't said yet? What is the highest field in all of college football? Nope, it's not Cal Berkeley's. We're talking about sea level. And at 7,215 feet, War Memorial is the highest in all of sports. Better bring your oxygen. Near the north end is a statue of the picture that was used for the Wyoming Cowboys logo and is also featured on the state's license plate. And that's about all the excitement Wyoming can handle. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I mean, if you made it this far, Go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe, why not? Also, I have a ton of other videos on stadiums if you want to check those out because do not underestimate the power of Google Earth and boredom. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to the end of this video.